and we're recording. Hello viewers, this is The Period Show with your host Jack Thompson. Unfortunately, Jordan won't be joining us today because of other engagements, so it'll be just it'll be me and Damien for today. Damien, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, hello. Uh, I am Damien Taylor. I am the uh, the, the ex CEO of Goldfire Media. Uh, we started it back in September 2017, and uh, so it started off quite small, and we really just got better. Like first of all, it was just me writing, and then more and more came in. Uh, in 2018, and uh, yeah, about about 2018, we started breaking even. Then we started making like some money, and then um, yeah, we, so we kept on uh, inclining up until about 2019, which is where um, we got uh, we got shadow banned. So um, we lost like so it came to like you know it was just kind of going like that. All the money like it was coming in, like with the su success was coming in. All of a sudden, like 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 that just because of the, the sense shift and stuff and uh, that's i think that's going to be uh the topic if i um you know, like if i uh sold correctly so i thought i'd just uh, share my experience and what have you so well a lot a lot of what you've just said has happened to many people uh katie hopkins being one of the more mm -hmm. prolific examples most recently she was uh banned from twitter uh, i heard an article when donald trump was banned from Twitter for a temporary mm. amount of time. I think that's a bit stupid, banning a yeah. president of the country from Twitter uh, because he needs to get in contact with all these supporters and his nation. Uh, so let's talk about your experiences with censorship. Uh, obviously, you being shadow banned has caused you to be deplatformed completely. Could you tell me more about what happened there? All right, so our main page had about um, 12,000 likes, something like that, by the time it was shadow banned. And we had like some other ones as well, which are about five, six, seven thousand. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the main one got banned. And then like, the other ones kind of followed after that. So then we started releasing stuff. Um, you know, like the, 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 the writers will get, will get money out of the site from like donations and stuff. So, uh, but, but those donations stopped coming in. So then, you know, there's no money. The company lost lost all its money. We didn't have any money to pay writers, so um, we went bust at the end of June last year. So, um, so yeah, potentially, uh, I was I was trying to get into a state where I could um, I could have quit my other job and just done that for a living. And uh, to be honest, that was kind of my dream. I was like, you know, it's kind of more and more real. I was getting more and more excited as it was going along. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, it was just. Uh, yeah, all that was just halted at like you know a click of a, a click of a button, and I think the thing is that we weren't even that right wing, you know, like we were we were just kind of uh, there were moderates uh, writing for us. There were some right wingers writing for us. There was uh, Emilio, uh, no, um, wasn't it Emmanuel Matos? He was writing for us for quite some time, and um, yeah, he, yeah, he was writing about uh, just what, what he kind of believed in, like. Uh, Issues with the black community and his, and his um, like Christian beliefs and what have you, and uh, yeah, so he, yeah, so he was yeah he was writing for us at the same time, so we were pretty much open to whoever you know if someone uh, like had a had a voice and wants to be heard and if they're a good writer uh, like yeah if they're a good writer would would hire them, so yeah libertarians and all that we weren't even right wing and that's and my point is that this can happen to anyone you know you don't have to just be right wing for for, for you to get censored by um by the thought police just because you have an opinion that you that others don't like so eventually it's going to happen to everyone you know it's like it happened it happened to me it's happened to uh you know like the more right-wing people like uh milo and uh and katie hopkins um so yeah it, it, it really can just happen to anyone um i know that the majority of these people have been banned from the mainstream social media sites such as Tommy Robinson, Katie Hopkins have all moved to different, more less known social media sites such as VK and Parler. Have you decided to go onto one of them sites yourself? I've tried I've tried Gab, but it kind of seems like it's uh, it's too closed in on itself. You know, like if you uh, if you go onto Gab 
everyone's got the same opinion you know like uh, everyone is right wing conservative like uh, like like some like some of them are like really far right but you know you don't you don't find you don't find too many of them although you will find them if you look for them you know but, uh, um it yeah it just seems too closed in i think what we need uh if we were to start a, uh, a social media uh, to post facebook we need something which anyone can join so let's say uh, let, let, let's say you want somewhere which, uh, let's say your nan can join or something like that, because essentially that's what that's what um, Facebook's all about. You can be anyone and have a Facebook account. So, yeah, maybe basically you just need to say, like this is the same the same kind of thing. Like you just need need Facebook but no censorship, that sort of thing. I think that that's like Gab is never going to reach where it it wants to reach just because of that. Yes, I uh, have, and I think these lower sites are less known, so they won't have the audience that Facebook and Twitter have. And Facebook and Twitter, uh, the past year, I've been posting uh, quite a lot of things on Facebook and Twitter, and the majority aren't even uh, right-wing posts. It's common sense posts about uh, what's been going on with the BLM movement, uh, other things like that, and the. the somehow went against their community standards. I think the whole community standards debate is complete nonsense. I mean... Well, it keeps changing all the time, doesn't it? It does, it does. If you, if you don't agree with a point of view that Mark Zuckerberg has or any other Facebook staff, then they'll remove your post. And I think that's sl- sliding more into the communist state yeah, censorship yeah. rather than the democratic state that we should have. It's the same thing of everywhere. It's it's like uh, hate speech, for example, like hate speech. Uh, that, that that that's not a very specific term, so that can be redefined at any moment. So they could say if someone says anything, uh, it, like even slightly spiteful against someone else, they could say, "Oh, that that's that's hate speech. You're being hateful." Where I don't know, ten years back, you know, if you were like saying like racial obscenities to someone in a threatening way, then that would be hate speech. But right now, it's like that term's lost its uh, it's lost its definition, which is unfortunate because when actual issues do happen, when you have someone who's actually uh, using hate speech against someone else, it's not taken as seriously anymore. So people kind of think, oh, is he is he just saying something offensive? And so you actually kind of uh, doesn't help that help doesn't help the left by um, when when they define everything as hate speech. So it's, yeah, it's interesting how they don't see these things backfiring on them. Well, I totally agree with what you're saying. The list of things we can say is less than the list of things we can't say. The list of things that we can't say is that much, mm. and then there's a tiny, minuscule amount of political correct ver ver. Vocabulary, there's the word, uh, politically correct vocabulary that we'll have to say, otherwise we'll be banned from social media, we'll be threatened with community orders, we'll be threatened with jail time as well. Mm. Oh yeah, well, that's, that's happened. I, I read something about this uh, this 12 year old who um, who said who's like who said like something offensive to uh, th- this football player who's like 27, and he got he got jail time for it. I was like, that's crazy. Like, why why do you give a twelve year old jail time just by saying something offensive? Like, surely you should get like I don't know, like a slap on the wrist, or you know, maybe like you know, have have the importance of uh, of not being offensive explained to him at that age. That's just crazy. It's yeah. Like, I I, I get it. They want, might want to like uh, make an example of him, but still, that's that's not. Um, yeah, like, that's that's just a step too far. Like yes. way too far. It's, it's actually worrying. Just how uh, how far they're going to take that? Because this child is twelve and he's probably still learning the yeah, yeah, British exactly. values and what to say, what not to say. He's still going through that learning stage. So why mm. why punish the kid for when when he's in the middle of the education stage? It's just it's just stupid. J- jailing a twelve year old child for something he said to a footballer. It's yeah. Just educate the kid instead of throwing him in jail. You know, if I was a footballer, I just wouldn't care. Like, sure, like surely, like you, you're the like, the least oppressed person on on the earth. Like, why would you, why would you care what some twelve year old's got to say about you? Exactly. You, you've got the money. You, you've got yeah, the status. Exactly. Why, why listen to some 
twelve year old child about what he has been. Uh, I'll guarantee you, he's from a rival football club's fan group. Oh God! And yeah. stuff like that happens all the time. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I think racism is wrong. Oh, and of especially in in football, uh, definitely needs addressed. However, this was a twelve year old child. We need to. We need to just. We need to stop being stupid yeah. with this. We need to just reevaluate what's actually happened with this child, and instead of punishing him for for a reckless mistake, we should educate the child on what to say properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. We need to tell him what he said was a bad thing, and then instead of just putting him in jail with murderers, rapists, people like that. Mm. We, as I said before, when he educated them. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly, I agree. Um, so, following on, I, w- I w- want to talk about football a bit more. Um, obviously, a lot of uh, racism has been in the football industry. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. For, um, for as long as I can remember, like, whenever I go to football matches and stuff like that, then, yeah, there's always been, uh, yeah, blatant racism and just... And just general like just disregard for other people. I mean, you hear about like uh, I don't know, like uh, like so like someone from opposing team going to like someone on the tube or something like that, and then realize they're wearing like I don't know, like a, a Tottenham shirt, and then just kind of like takes a uh, takes a piss on them and stuff, and stuff like that. You hear it's just stuff like that, and uh, yeah, no, it's it's, it's incredible. I, I personally, I don't I don't get how you can uh, you know take a game that literally to do that. But I guess like other people, like, I'm not a football fan or. Or anything like that, but uh, I do, I do kind of get the frustration, but they, yeah, like they've been taking it too far for ages. So yeah, racism is that's another thing in there as well. So mm-hmm. and obviously, I think the especially the Premier League have took a bit too much of a step with the Black Lives Matter movement by incorporating a, a kneel before every single match, uh, and also. Their names are placed on the kit with Black Lives Matter. Uh, I believe that's a bit too much of, of a step well, in favour of what's gone on, if you know what I mean. Well, the thing is, with like, if you've got a belief or something like that, if you want to kneel during the song, then I believe, yeah, do you know what? Sure, it's your, it's your right to, you know, if you want to kneel it, like, and, and you have a reason to do it, you know, it's, it's, it's your own reason, you want to kneel, then yeah, fine, you've got, you got every right to but yeah, it's it is kind of getting to the point where it's been shoved down our throats. Like you have to accept it. Like if you don't support Black Lives Matter, like um, then yeah, you know you're a racist. And the matter of the fact is that people kind of uh, uh, they they solidify the idea that you know Black Lives Matter and caring about Black Lives is kind of one thing. The thing is, Black Lives Matter is an organisation. It's it's an idea up from someone. It's yeah, it's an organisation. It takes in money and actually does a certain thing, and that's completely different to a to an idea. It's the same thing with Antifa. You know, the the idea is that you know you're going to be anti-fascist and all that, and to an everyday Joe, he's going to think, oh, fascism. I'd, I'd, well, obviously, I don't want that back. So they might kind of um, like show support for him in a way, which like, oh, if, if they're standing against like racists or fascists or whatever, then fair enough. But actually, the, in reality. Yeah, they're beating people out with uh, with padlocks just for being right wing, and that's yeah, that's that's not cool at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, and Antifa has has quite the reputation when it comes to mm. beating people up. Yes, uh, Donald Trump has most recently branded it a terrorist organization. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, I yeah. think the United Kingdom government should take the exact same step because that, in my opinion, that's what it is. It's inciting violence with a political motive. That is the definition of terrorism. So I've, I've even had like a, a near run-in with one of them once, where he where he threatened me. Um, like I wasn't even doing anything, and he threatened me. He had like a stick in his hand, and he was saying, "Oh come on, give me a reason, give me a reason." I've I've got video footage of it somewhere. See if I can uh, see if I can find it and show it to you. But uh, uh, yeah, no, it, like. Uh, yeah, like, it's like some of these places, like, yeah, you hear all sorts of stories about them. Like, for example, like the, like the padlocks and stuff. Or you find out that, like, the, the riots that they've been doing and participating in here, people end up dead from them. I mean, 
no yeah no i no wonder that's a organization like a terrorist organization 100 yeah, percent should be right to stick with the topic of uh, censorship this just came in my mind uh, yesterday i was watching uh, the netflix uh documentary about jeffrey epstein uh, that's been taking the news quite heavily uh, these recent weeks with the arrest of Gisley Maxwell. Yeah. Uh, there was there was a segment in this documentary of when a Vanity Fair author was writing an article about Jeffrey and found out that Jeffrey was a monster. What he, he found out what he did to young girls in his uh, Ohio ranch. Uh, and she wanted to write about this in this Vanity Fair piece that she was doing. However, the editor said no, because Jeffrey Epstein was one of the high contributors to Vanity Fair at this time. So when the, the piece was published, it had everything good about Jeffrey in, but not nothing about the bad stuff that he was doing. That's doesn't, another type of censorship, which is too much in this world. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't surprise me a bit. Like, uh, there's so much manipulation to what can be said in the media that is actually unbelievable. You know, like, um, like spe yeah, especially if it has to do with anything like Jeffrey Epstein or like the BBC or, or anything like that. It seems, yeah, it seems like uh, the Me Too, the Me Too movement isn't quite over yet. Like, it, I think it's yet to happen with children and stuff. I think uh, they're yet to speak out about uh, obscenities like what happened with uh, you know Epstein's Island and, and stuff. Um, like you hear, like, I've, like you, you you see all these names that you wouldn't expect on the list. Like you got Eminem on there. And uh, you got Tom Hanks as well. So you're thinking, like, what what, what are they doing? Going to uh, going to his private island where it said like uh, there were children on it, and uh, there there were like in some cases like I, I, like apparently they they were eating them. So I don't know um, how much of that is true, but I I, I know that there's um, there was like some uh, sexualization there with, with children. So uh, I think we're waiting for all that to come out. I think it will uh, it will come out. Because the more, yeah, the more going back to like free speech and all that, the more the more that's kind of suppressed downwards, then it's just going to come out. You know, eventually it will come out. Everything eventually does come out. So I think we're just going to wait for all that to come out. <laughs> but I think I think we should normalise speaking out about uh, the certain things that happen to people. Definitely because people are scared. To speak out because of what happened with people like Jeffrey Epstein, Harvey Weinstein, uh, they're, they're getting threatened by these high profile figures with lots of money and lots of contacts and that is sent a totally different type of censorship to what we're used to when it comes to political censorship and I think the victims of the censorship when it comes to sexual misconduct of high profile figures Need, needs outlets needs it, it we need to normalize people to speak out about the horrific events that they've endured yeah and absolutely the e2 movement needs to be boosted up a bit more in my opinion it, it it was boosted up slightly with the kevin spacey harvey weinstein allegations it was out in the news uh, it was boosted with the jeffrey epstein but i think now it's going downhill a bit more. I think we need to put it in the in the lights a bit more to, to get people to speak out, to get people to say it, me too. It might be that people are already speaking out, but then again, this is when people don't realise how much power the media actually has. Like, uh, yeah, if if they want to amplify something, then, then they will. Like, for example, the George Floyd case, they will amplify that as much as they want. And, um, yeah, but when it comes to... Um, like uh, the fact that Epstein didn't kill himself or anything like that. Yeah, they, they only cover it so much just because, uh, yeah, well, the, yeah, if you connect the dots, then you're, you're going to think that uh, that it's going to be uh, like to protect the people around them. Because if you think about like CNN and uh, uh, the like all the other ones, right, you think about the companies that own them, right, and you got to think that they're, they're, those companies are going to have links to uh, certain celebrities and, and their agents and their managers and stuff. And you, you just get, you're going to realize that everything is kind of uh, owned by the same company. So they're not like, so they're going to, that's, that's how they're going to protect it. Those were my findings anyway, that, uh, that pretty much everything is just owned by, uh, 
Well, they, yeah, they even say, like, um, how much was it? Like, 90% of all the companies in the world were owned by, uh, like, a handful of companies. So, uh, I think this, yeah, this is about five, six, seven companies overall that own, like, 90, 90% of the world's companies. And it's, I, I just thought, that's, that's crazy. So... That's power at the end of the day. Well, Disney, Disney's one of those companies... So um, you think you think about how like, um, how many uh, fingers they've got in uh, in each pie, um, that you think that they'll be protecting them as well. So I reckon there might be something out on uh, going up against Disney at some point. So I reckon well, there, there was rumours about Walt Disney being a, a Nazi sympathizer. I heard about oh, that. He, he was. He was. Yeah, he was definitely. Yeah, he but, yeah, yeah, he hated. People- celebrate disney people go to disney world people buy disney films costumes mm. oh, uh, he was an anti sympathizer yeah well, Why? people boycott other things people are uh, ripping down statues because of what they did 200 years ago but when it comes to a company that's still alive and kicking today people don't mention that hugo boss hugo boss was a nazi but uh, oh, Lewis he Hamilton, was, yeah. Uh, is sponsored by Hugo Boss, but he doesn't denounce them. Well, the thing is that they're talking about, um, like, so, for example, the uh, the scientist who uh, discovered Asperger's, um, he was German. He was a he was a, a Nazi era German, and he supported the Nazis as well. And they I think they were they were talking about changing his name, but how come they're not talking about changing Disney's name or anything? Like that? How come like they still want to honor this guy? Who was like, a, like you know, he he hated Jewish people, and um, yeah, and he, he was like very prejudiced, and he was kind, he was everything that left fighting against. I know it's a very blatant double standard that um, you know it's uh, it's essentially you know like uh, it, like the emperor wearing no clothes, pretty much like you know, like you know it's like you can't you can't question the double standard. Every like anyone who pays attention will know this double standard is this like let's say for example um like the 2020 uh, presidential race for example so you have you've got trump right and the left call left calls him like a rapist a racist and all these things but their but their their replacement for him is like you know exactly the same thing that they're calling donald trump so yeah that's a massive double standard they, they could have chosen someone who was actually you know like who had a half decent argument and actually brought something to the table i mean i'm not a fan but bernie sanders for example i'd have thought he might have won you know like because he because he had he had an idea whether it's a good or a good idea or not is like is up up to debate but he actually brought something to the table and biden doesn't it's just like the same old same old from like the 50 years he's already been in politics for in fact he doesn't even know what, what office he's running for as well which i find funny so Joe Biden is a very weird person in my like I've seen videos of him oh god yeah mostly kissing other other S- girls sniff. stuff like that it's, mm. and I think the only surfboard that Joe Biden is currently riding or on is he was vice president that's just like what Hillary Clinton rid on yeah uh-huh I think, and I think the the left's strategy to this is just uh I find this funny as well like just uh, try not to show too much of Joe Biden. Like, it's just so people have no idea what he's about. He's just the not Trump choice. You know, he's uh-huh. going to hope that people just go for, like, vote not Trump, so Democrat, and they won't, they won't realise that they're, they're voting pretty much the same, same guy again. Well, in, in their idea. So This year has been a very politically controversial year for America. I think the George Floyd killing was blasted all over the media platforms because it's an election year. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I think a lot of things are, are being said about Donald Trump. Uh, his picture with Jeffrey Epstein is being shown more than it used to be now it's an election year. Yeah. Um, so a, a lot of things are, are happening this year when it comes to American politics to try and deplatform Donald Trump. I honestly think he's going to be re-elected. Uh, I think it's a very good ploy what he's done with Kanye West. How Kanye West announced he was running for president. I think that's a ploy by Donald Trump. 
at you know, times. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be disappointed if, if uh, Kanye West won. I just want to see it. Like, I, I, I just want to see Kanye West as president. Like, uh, like what's, what's the worst that can happen now? I mean, we're, we're, we're having, like, a, a global, ep- like, pandemic. And, like, most, like, some of us are going to be dead from that anyway. You know, it's going to be a, quite a tragic year in history. Let's just get Kanye West. You know, I, I don't, I don't care anymore. Let's just get it's Kanye West. Than Joe Biden. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, let's talk about more about George Floyd, because I think that's got a lot to do with the censorship. Uh, earlier this week, I think it was yesterday, perhaps there was a woman shot in the head for telling a Black Lives Matter protester that all lives matter. Oh, um, yeah, I heard about that. It's awful. And to be honest, that's not pasted around the media like the George Floyd case was. Um, that's got to tell you something. Oh, it's, uh, oh yeah, it's, it's an obvious... Uh, again, it's, 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 this goes back to my uh, my statement of, like, you know, the, like emperor with no clothes on, you know, no one, no one can say it because it's a massive hypocrisy. But mind you, if you, if you if you mention that, you know, like then people are going to think, oh, he's racist. He's speaking up. He's speaking up against Black Lives Matter. Someone said, like, you know, it's like the narrative is that you know you say all lives matter, then you know you don't believe that all lives matter. You believe, oh, like all lives matter apart from blacks. You know, that's that's kind of how it's perceived, even though it's not. Um, that's not what it's meant by it. Like, so, like, yes, the, the the whole thing with that is just you got you got people on one side is is saying like oh all lives matter anyway, but we're saying that black lives matter like they matter more, and that's fair enough as long, as long as they're not they're not hurting anyone you know they do that the whole um like I, I don't understand how people don't protest like like they did back in back in the sixties I mean surely people would take them far more seriously if they did that so yeah they, yeah they they think that you know. All lives matter anyway, but you know, black lives matter as well. That's kind of the message they're, getting, they're trying to get across. But other people saying all lives matter, that includes black lives as well. So, um, like, there's, there's, that's kind of like two sides of the argument. Not, neither one is wrong. It's kind, of, it's, but it's like people kind of take let their emotions take control of. Um, yeah, like so, it's just yeah, fa- like it's feelings above facts, pretty much, and people get all like sensitive about it, and uh, and then they kind of go, you, you go off into this race war, pretty much, and um, so yeah, uh, and yeah, the, 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 the one thing kind of leads to another, and you end up with stuff like this, like like surely if Black Lives Mattered, right, then or if all lives, you know, all lives matter, that's that sort of thing, but if, yeah, Black Lives Matter, like surely um like have no one else die you know like like spread a, a message of like you know peace and peace and unity and all that and like also with the um like the black on black shootings as well they never address that and that's so annoying like why don't they address that because if black lives matter then surely like all black lives matter so and like you know black like for example in chicago the numbers per per week of like black men dying from gun violence in chicago is like 50 people a week or something like that it's like ridiculous so like surely like these these are the communities that are being hurt the most speak up against those like i'd have less of an issue with the black lives matter movement if they spoke up against you know all black lives yes uh and one of the police officers killed in the the began protests was black but yeah there, there was there was no no protests for him um, it's 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 all a contradiction. It's all hypocrisy. Um, it's you've got to bear in mind that George Floyd was a criminal. I'm not saying he should have died in no way, shape, no, or form. That, that, to die. that was police brutality. What happened to him? It was all- uh, definitely, and I hope Derek Chauvin gets all of the punishment he deserves. But I don't believe George Floyd is the martyr of the BLM. No, he doesn't. He doesn't deserve to be a martyr. I'll be honest. He's done hor- He's done horrible things, which doesn't make him a good martyr. You know, like Martin Luther King. He would have never done anything like that. Like he would like. He would. He's a good martyr. You know, he had. He had a. He had a dream. You know, he. He. He had a certain way of doing things. You know, which was always kind of peaceful. Like he showed. He wanted unity amongst everyone. You know, it wasn't just like with his. Uh, with the people like, who were being oppressed at the time. 
he want like he wanted to um like he, he saw everyone as brother like you know black or white you know you like you were his brother and that's that's kind of what we need now if we if we're gonna because there is a racial divide you know the racism still exists sure but if you want to fix all that then surely you've got to implement the same kind of thing they implemented back then the march that uh, martin luther king did that big gigantic march that changed the political world in america uh, something like that w- yeah. would be enough for the political establishment to actually address the problem and um, of police brutality towards uh, the black community however smashing shots killing people mm. and just causing anarchy in, in the streets burning down police departments isn't going to solve the problem it's going to create more problems i know i know right I, I understand the upset but i don't understand why they had to smash up their own communities as well like that i didn't get like surely like not saying it's okay to smash up some like someone someone's shop or or building or whatever but wouldn't it have made more sense for them to attack the government to attack government buildings for example like wouldn't that make a bit more of a statement wouldn't wouldn't the government then be a bit more afraid of afraid of them but i i, I don't know it's um it's complicated One of the things that confuses me like I, I saw a post on facebook of black owners of businesses being attacked by the blm protesters that doesn't make any sense if black lives matter why are you ruining someone's business if, if they are black as well mm. oh yeah you see all the videos on facebook and stuff like that of like you know you, you hear like you, you see like black people coming out saying why are you destroy my business you know i'm from the ghetto as well so why why if all lives matter you know black lives matter then why did you just destroy my life and uh yeah no it's awful what happens and definitely as i said in there the BLM episode of the period show. The majority of the protesters are hijackers for a different political motive altogether. If it's to deplatform Boris Johnson, if it's to try and reverse Brexit, if it's just to just to cause trouble, there's people who are joining this these movements in order to cause trouble, in order to rip down oh, statues, in order to throw bottles at police officers in the streets of London, Bristol, Newcastle. It's politics today is not all defined on race, religion, stuff mm. like that. I think we need to completely throw that ideology to one side and to go back to traditional, not, not even party politics, to the politics that the people want at the end of the day, if that's about economic, if that's about society, uh, something that could make us better instead of tearing us apart. Yeah, I agree, 100%. Yeah. Um, I want to talk more about Katie Hopkins because I think she, she's like my almighty. I love that Leah Hayden. I personally love her. Uh, I think she is one, one of the best people to come from Great Britain. Uh, I hope the God she was going to Prime Minister one day, but then. Um, she has said a lot of a lot of controversial things, yes. But I believe that if someone's got something to say on a particular topic, this should be heard. And if someone wants to counter that argument, feel free to do so. Don't don't remove their opinion. Don't deplatform them from a social media sites. If someone wants to say something, if someone doesn't agree with what's going on, this should be heard. And that, that's exactly what you were doing with uh, with your, your writing. Um, but it's, it's a political agenda to remove uh, the articles and people away from the public spotlight when it comes to something that doesn't agree with the establishment, with the leftist movements such as BLM, uh, Extinction Rebellion, stuff like that. Mm. I think this nation and a lot of other nations, such as America, are turning into a snowflake nation when it comes to when it comes to censorship. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I think some people just don't 
that refuse to acknowledge that it even happens. So um, the thing is, it can happen to anyone. If you're outspoken, let's say if you're on the left, and let's say like a Ricky Gervais-like person, right? So Ricky Gervais, you know, he's on the left. And um, a lot of things he says, I agree with. Like, uh, for example, on censorship, we have the same, you know, we, we, both of us have the same opinion. But, uh, you know, I think only when it comes to, um, like, economical issues, like he's more of like a socialism kind of guy. Or I'm kind of more of like, you know, like a small business kind of guy. Um, we differ there, but at the same time, at the same time, you don't need to be left wing for someone to censor you. You know, you, you have like the wrong opinion like once, like like J.K. Rowling, for example. Then all of a sudden, you're like you're you're hated. You know, you're you're absolute piece of shit. You know, you deserve to have uh, mean comments uh, thrown at you, and like and uh, death threats, and uh, yeah, like uh, yeah, it is uh, absolutely crazy. Like going back to uh, hate Katie Hopkins, right? Uh, I would like I wouldn't say I'm a massive fan, but I do appre I do appreciate how um, she doesn't have a filter. I do appreciate that. I think uh, again, it's a controversial kind of kind from me, but uh, yeah, we need more people who do not have a filter. Those are the best kind of people, because uh, yeah, people who just who speak their mind. You, you can't like you always know how how they feel. You know, you might feel a certain way about uh, about something, but you're a bit like. Uh, uneasy to speak about it just in case let's say in some environments you could get fired for saying something too inappropriate right um but people like katie hopkins they'll say it right and uh yeah sometimes it will be like the right th the right thing to say sometimes it'll be the wrong thing to say you know um i think i think she's uh, yeah i think she, she's a, she's okay i think a lot of people uh take i think a lot of people take her uh it like in a different way so it's, it's all about uh, how how you comprehend how someone's saying something. So uh, I think yeah, she's done stupid stuff in the past, though. Like, like for example, uh, like that that famous uh, this morning um, thing she did, where where she said like, oh, I don't like it when when people call their their kids after the name of a country or or a place. But and then Philip Schofield says, oh, but your daughter's called India, and instantly like shuts her up. And you know, and I'm like, after that, it's time. It's hard to take someone seriously. When she's doing something, doing something like that, but at the same time, Katie Hopkins is Katie Hopkins because she says um, like outrageous things, right? Sometimes they're true, and um, and that's kind of how, that's how she makes her money. So she make she makes money from uh, from saying things like that. So I don't like because there's a financial uh, initiative to her saying inappropriate things sometimes. Although it can be right, like a lot of the Harry and Meghan stuff, like she's right on that, in my opinion anyway, she's right on that. But uh, yeah, she she's kind of paid to uh, to be, you know, like as vocal as possible. So uh, mm -hmm. her heart might not always be in it, but she just kind of thinks of something, oh, like what do I kind of like, what, what do I dislike? And like, you know, like, like uh, Harry and Meghan, and then like, okay, right, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to say something that's like, uh, you know, like, uh, I want to make a statement with that, and then um, you know, like, like just voice the most open opinion possible, and then you know, there, there's um, you know, like she, she's made money that way. She's got to maintain the title of the biggest bitch in Britain. Uh, <laughs> she's got to maintain that title, otherwise, someone else like Gemma Collins, Kim Woodburn could could take over that. Uh, so she's got to say these things in order to keep the status of the biggest bitch in Britain and. When you say that some of the things she says she doesn't agree with, I, tot I totally agree with that. I think some of the things she has said on stuff like this morning, especially when in regards to her daughter and celebrity juice programs like that, I think that she doesn't agree with some of the things that she said, but someone has taught her to say these things in order to, to get the status that she has now, to get the recognition, to get the hate, because she feeds off hate. She needs hate to yeah. feed up. So, yes, uh, but o other things with the Harry and Meghan, with the BLM, with the, the Asylum Seekers video she did most recently, I totally agree that she agrees on them as well. And she wants, just like Nigel Farage, just like Gerald Batten, people like that, want a change in this country and they're being deplatformed because of it. Because they don't agree with a certain mindset they haven't been silenced, shadow banned, stuff like that. And it's it's wrong because every voice should be heard. 
Otherwise, oh, absolutely, yeah. It's going to end up like the Me Too movement. If voices cannot be heard, then it, it's people are just going to not say anything. If if they're not allowed to say anything, they're, they're just going to shut up. If that's the way the agenda is going, if they feel like they can't get their voice heard or are being threatened against for trying to say something, then they won't say anything at all. And that's when Britain will fall. It will be a silent nation and the leftist agenda and the establishment will win. And we don't want that. To be honest with you, I think, I think that's probably what's going to happen. I think uh, I think we've got to lose a little bit. I think people kind of come, got to go to the reality that uh, you know socialism is not amazing. And I think that we will head down the road of, um, you know, turning out like Venezuela, if I'm honest with you. Like, I think when we're starting to go down that road, people will start realising then, or like, uh, oh, that's, that's not what all this, like, um, social justice is all about, or, like, being PC and what have you. Like, all of this kind of, like, uh, uh, a cultural breakdown of, uh, of our nation. It's, it's the same for everyone else as well, like, in America... And um, and with Italy and it, all, yeah, all over all over the globe, it's going to happen. Like you even hear about some some stuff like people from Venezuela saying, um, "Oh, we never we never thought this would happen to our country." You know, it's, it seems such as far fetched, but it all kind of started with like uh, all these Marxist ideas coming out, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're having to wait in bread lines, and uh, and when we go to the supermarket, there's no food on the shelves. You know, it, it kind of uh, all drives from that. Of course, this is kind of more of a political, like uh, an economic standpoint than a the social one, but both work. Both well, both work hand in hand. So uh, it's yeah, it's Marx is Marxism pretty much. So it's both social and uh, and economical. And that's how it's designed to to work. It's like a wheel. It's a wheel. It's a cycle. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think we have covered everything there is to cover. Have you got any last words for today's episode? Uh, nope. Just, just know that you know, whoever you are, you know, like you, you say, say the wrong thing, you're fucked. You know, like if, uh, that's 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 the message, pretty much. But we want to urge people to try and look past that line of, uh, your your well, career has ended if you say something. Your your social status has ended. You're gonna lose a lot of friends. We want people to look past that because that's what people that's what the leftist agenda and the establishment want people to think. You will go down in the rankings if you say something against us. We we want people to speak out about these things. Yeah, if, if we yeah, silence, we, they yeah, will win. We exactly. don't want them to win. Well yeah, exactly. If we can raise awareness of this sort of thing, you know, it can happen to absolutely anyone. And what what I don't want people to think is it's just like mutually exclusive to anyone I don't know or, or like who's uh, who's on the right of the political spectrum. It can be anyone, you know. It could be like you could find that uh, that Ricky Gervais might be banned off Twitter one day. You might find that uh, um, uh, J.K. Rowling like she could be uh, banned off Twitter at any point just because like she had a view on uh, like she she thought that people who were like transgender and all that like if you're born a male then you're born a male or if you're born a woman then you're born a woman which is you know it's, it's a fair that's, that's that's fair i mean like, that's uh, scientifically correct but um yeah the, 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 all that yeah the, her fans didn't appreciate that and all that so um yeah it, you know, it, it's in the, the day it's science if yeah if you like if you uh you think that someone's born a man and they are a man, then they're, they're, yeah, they are they're a man. Like, it's all, it's all like, um, let's say if I knew someone who was like transgender and all that, I'd probably be, I'd probably be cool with it. I think I'd probably be like, right, okay, if, if you're a man turning into a woman, then fair, fair enough, I'll call you uh, like Shauna instead of Sean or something like that or whatever. But at the same time, that should be my choice if I want to do that or not. Like, I'd do it out of respect if I liked that person enough. Obviously, if I didn't like him, and if I want to, like, I call them an insult or something like that, I, I'd like, you know, you, you then you should have the right to do that. I'm not saying that's the morally right thing, but you should have the lawful right to do it. Yes. Uh, instead of just turning, uh, instead of shouting hate crime or 
calling the police on someone doing yeah. that. Yeah, or finding yeah. someone loads of money for saying, uh, what is it, like, show, show us your penis, Bruce, to, um, to Caitlyn Jenner, saying something like that. Like, worst case scenario, like, you get a slap on the wrist or get sent out the room or something, you know. You have to get billed, like, quarter of a million dollars or however much. Well, you've got to bear in mind that Bruce, uh, Caitlyn Jenner is a high-profile figure once again. And yeah. you knowing them type of people, they will stop at nothing to punish the, the, the less well-off, the le- less known. Just like that 12-year-old boy in the footballer case, that's what's happened. Yeah, it's yeah. the high-profile person trying to put down the low-profile person. And, and that's that's just class these days. That's what happens when it comes to people in the public eye, people in the spotlight. Hollywood is a big example. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein. When it comes to that, if someone has got something to say about someone in the public eye, the big, big iconic whatever will do whatever they can to squash that other person. And that's what's been happening in the past... 10, 20, 30 years. Mm. Yeah, well, that's uh, bad business. It is. And on that note, guys, thank you very much for watching today's episode. I want to thank Dan, uh, Damien for giving up his time to talk to me today. Hopefully next week we'll be back with Jordan. Uh, it'll be another me and him episode of talking about something in the news. Uh, until then, thank you very much, guys, for watching. All right, take care.